Hi, gang. Bob Boving with you for the Mystery Project. Tonight, part one of Rue Morgue Redux. It's a retelling of the famous Edgar Allan Poe story, The Murders in the Rue Morgue, adapted and dramatized by Neil Monroe. For our presentation, he has reset the tale in a dark and shadowy section of Toronto in 1889. Our entry into the story is through the eyes of Dr. John Carver. He's a young man recently assigned to the coroner's office. before the New Year's, 89 into 90, 1890. I had come straight out of medical school into the Toronto coroner's office. Carver the coroner was the standard jibe. Yes, just before New Year's. I remember fragments, bits of memory, Pictures merged, the way snowflakes linked to make a carpet on the ground. It was on a dark, dragging night, just before New Year's Eve. Hey, baby, okay. uh, excuse me, sir. Change. Map. Uh, change. Uh, uh, change for, for a biscuit. For, for the monkey. All right, now move on, you. Get. I ain't doing nobody harm. You ain't doing what I'm telling you. Move it. I been under this lamp before you was born, Sonny. Get on over to Young Street where it's bright. Hey, hey, hey. Beating up on decent folks. You cops are worse than the criminals. Between cops, thugs, Chinese landlords, a beggar's life ain't worth living. Damn you. That's all I can say. Watch yourself there! That's a police man! Oh. That's how it would have happened. Deep in the night, the city taking a surprised victim. We watch day after day turn into night after night. And yet when the night reaches out for us, we're always surprised. Oh, 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 now. You trying to get us killed, Constable Jones? That's Inspector Hudson. Sorry, Inspector. A long, lean oh, man. Hard as wire. Toronto's horses. top cop. Is he all right, sir? Uh, I shouldn't think so. Let's take a look. Wave him on, Jonesy. Tell him to go on to the crime site. Yes, sir. You keep going. We're all right here. Yes, all right. See you there. That's me, John Carver, in the other van. I had no idea of all the terrible things that had now been put in motion. This your beat, Constable? Jackson, sir. Yes, sir. Know him? Organ grinder, Inspector Hudson. Organ grinder killed by callous police. Another front page for the coffee and toast set. What was that? Hmm? Must be the organ grinder's monkey, sir. Mm. Jonesy, huh? get down here, will you? Yes, sir. Give Jackson a hand. Get the poor beggar out from under the coach. Uh-huh. We're stuck there. One, two, three. Oh. Over oh. by the lamp post. There's blood on the side of the van, sir. Shall I rig the hose? No, no. Get back up there, Jonesy. Let's move. We're late. Yes, sir. You stand by, Jackson. We'll send someone back. Aye, right, sir. Yeah! I can imagine the old man lying bathed in the light of his Church Street lamppost. And I can imagine that alien and orphaned creature of his 
its tail curled around the axle of the police van, hurtling across Toronto on its way to me. To us. To Morgue Street. To its murders. Constable, no one in, no one out. I want this apartment building sealed tighter in a barrel of salt cod. That's Corporal Larson. A large doorknob of a man. I wanted to like him, but never managed it. I want a clear accounting of everybody in the building. I don't care if it's a fish in a bowl. I want to know where it was and what it was doing at the time of the murder. Corporal Larson, I would like to thank you. This was an experience very interesting. That's him. Inspector Dupin. A flashing little dandy of a policeman from French Canada. All collars and cuffs and snapping scarves. Thank you, Corporal Larson, for allowing me to view the crime scenes. You friends in high places, Inspector Dupin. That letter from Toronto's chief of police puts you anywhere, anytime you like. Caporal, un mot, s'il vous plaît. Uh, Corporal, uh, a word or two, sir. I'm getting too old for the night shift. Monsieur, si vous me permettez. Inspector's here, sir. I know, Constable. I see him. Corporal Larson, I know. If you'll excuse me, sir, Inspector Hudson has arrived. But, merde. I know. Crime scene secured, Corporal Larson. Yes, sir. Good. Where are we? Morgue Street, sir. I didn't know Toronto had a Morgue Street. Part of old Muddy York, sir. You hear that? What, sir? Never mind. We're late. Had an accident. Anybody hurt? Organ grinder. Had a monkey. Never mind. Let's go. Damn. If I'd been the fire department, the whole city would have been in the past tense. Morgue Street wasn't really a street. More of an alley twisted into the shape of an S. The first floor of the apartment building where the murders had happened had once been the morgue for an 1812 army hospital. Over the years, there had been efforts at renovation, but the dead were in the brick, it was said, and it had never taken. It was a sad, poor little street, Morgue Street. A perfect street for a double murder. Corporal Larson, fill me in. Mother and daughter, sir, uh, lived in the garret rooms above the fourth floor. Coroner's office here? Young Carver's about somewhere. Uh, right behind you, Inspector Hudson. Report? Murder, sir. The photographer's up there now, sir. They're taking pictures? New procedures. Keeps the crime scene forever fresh, they say. Inspector Hudson, bonsoir. I'm glad to make your acquaintance. Who are you? Who's he? Uh, something of a celebrity, Inspector. César Augustin Dupin. Inspector General des Forces Policières du Québec. The famous Inspector Dupin, sir, of the riverboat smugglers case in Montreal. The what? By using the methods of deductive reasoning, Inspector Dupin was able to track down a vicious gang of smugglers without ever leaving the station. All 30 were arrested in some small caves off the Plains of Abraham. I am César Augustin Dupin. Inspector General des Forces Policières du Québec. What is he doing here? Je vous explique tout, Inspector Hudson. You see, after having examined the crime scene... You examined... That is not only irregular, sir, that is illegal. Corporal Larson, have this foreigner arrested immediately. Uh, no, Inspector, vous ne comprenez uh, pas. That'd be a bit awkward, sir. He has a letter from our Chief of Police, Inspector Hudson. He's been given direct access to any and all crime scenes... Mr. Dupin, I'm a serious man, and homicide is a serious business. As murder is not currently listed among Toronto's tourist attractions, I'll say good night to you. Uh, mais, Inspector, le crime est déjà résolu. I have solved the crime. What are you talking about? You're not serious, man. You're telling me you've cracked this case? Ah, mais oui. Sir, you... you stupefy me. The mysteries of every crime scene are simply facts we cannot see. Once exposed, their mystery is reduced to the real, to the knowable. Oui? Monsieur, veuillez me suivre. I shall be happy to throw my own small light on some of the more puzzling aspects of the case. Where are you going? Where's he going? 
The body of the mother is around the back of the building, sir. That little frog is going to find out he's in a hell of a bigger pond than he thinks. Let's go. Do you hear that, sir? I thought I heard a... It's that organ grinder's monkey. How'd it get here, fly? Come on, let's catch up to our Quebec Sherlock. That was how we came together. The tall, stretched gristle of a Scotsman grappling with the smoke and mirrored mind of the French Canadian, with the portly Larson moving around them like a slow spinning top. All of us dancing on the bones of a crime scene that would soon bring us face to face with something so alien that the everyday world we thought we lived in would be revealed to us as the dangerously fragile house of cards it really was. Over here, Inspector Hudson. Here she is. What am I looking at? Uh, <clears throat> a, uh, Mrs. Uh, Lespane. Spine snapped, limbs crushed, throat slashed almost to severing. How'd she get here? Well, some of these wounds would be consistent with a fall from a high place. As from the garret rooms above the fourth floor? The fenêtres étaient verrouillées, Inspecteur. He says the windows were locked, sir. Locked? Oui. Uh, from the inside, Inspector. De l'intérieur, exactement. Then how'd she get down here? Well, uh... <clears throat> we don't know, sir. And we didn't. I do. And he did. You could see it in the way his smile tightened his small, penciled mustache. And it was a smile that said it had all the time in the world. Daughter's body's above the fourth floor? Uh, the garret rooms, yes, sir. Witnesses? Everybody in the building heard something. Nobody saw anything. Where are the stairs? Uh, this way, sir. Uh, no, no, mes amis. Regardez. the elevator. I, I noticed it on my first tour of the crime scene. You seem to notice a great many things, Inspector Dupin. It is my way, Inspector Hudson. Right. Let's go up. Night shift creates a natural anxiety in you that never goes away. It's a worry that you can never put your finger on. It would come to me in waves. And it came to me then, in the elevator, as we were being dragged up through the center of the building. It made me slightly sick. As if the worry was a warning. But a warning of what? Like a fool. I put it down to being tired. When the neighbors got up to the garret, the door was locked and everything was quiet. They heard voices. The low one was English, from England. The high one, some said, was German, another Italian, Spanish. Well, the only thing everybody was sure of was that whatever language the individual thought he was hearing, it was a language they themselves didn't speak. They knew what they didn't know. What? Never mind. Nous y sommes, inspecteur. Après vous, je vous prie. Uh, the small staircase to the right will lead you to the melancholy rooms of the Lespenaise. Pretty wild, Inspector Hudson. Massive amounts of blood, everything smashed, furniture tossed about. Half the bed is in the living room. Kid, false. Bloody razor on the chair. And this. Hair. Pulled out by the roots. Such strength. Where's the cuddle? Um, 
And up the chimney, sir. What? Feet first. Neck's broken. Tongue partially bitten through. Finger imprints around the throat. And the mother's in the courtyard. Et les fenêtres sont verrouillées de l'intérieur. He says that... I know, I know. The windows are locked on the inside. As was the door, Inspector. Well, it's all a bit of bloody well impossible, isn't it? Watch what you aim that damn thing. Beg your pardon, Inspector Hudson. What's your name? Uh, Carmichael, sir. I am against this frivolous photographing of the dead, Mr. Carmichael. Inspector Hudson, I happen to believe in the importance of photography as a forensic tool. I can vouch for Mr. Carmichael's veracity, sir. We went to university together. I'm not and interested I can... in your personal biography, Monsieur, Mr. Carmichael. Monsieur, je dois vous demander de vous taire et de m'écouter. J'ai des informations importantes à propos de ces meurtres et j'exige qu'on m'écoute. What did he say? I'm not at all fluent in the Catholic tongue, sir, but I think he's saying he has information about these murders that would be, if you'll pardon the literal translation, grossly negligent of you, sir, to ignore. What's your Christian name, Carmichael? Michael. Your name's Michael Carmichael? The second... All right, Inspector Dupin. I'm all ears, and it better be good. I'm not a man to hold a grudge, but I am not a man to trifle with. And you are attitudinally statuesque in either pose, sir, if I may say so. You may, and now that you have, you may get on with it. Nous voici, monsieur. And he did. Slowly, he untangled the story and opened up the truth like a... Body autopsied on a table, perhaps, and by doing so, perhaps, let the daylight in to do its sad work. There was a curious sense of free fall as Dupin went about his unraveling. All of us dropping into a world we could not have imagined in our wildest dreams. So, we agree that the voices heard were not the voices of the victims, but the voices of the perpetrators. We. Oui? We, oui. yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yes. The low and the high voice, yes. The witnesses agreed that the low voice was an Englishman. But none agreed about the high voice. Uh, except that it spoke in a language no one understood. Uh, we will come back to that. Now, looking around this sad room, the first thing that comes to mind is... Ingress, egress. How did the murderers get in? How did they get out? How? The door was locked, yes? Comment les meurtriers ont-ils pénétré la chambre? There is only one possible answer. The windows. They were locked from the inside, sir. Why reject a conclusion merely because it's impossible? That is so English. Scottish. If you're reduced to name calling, sir, get it right. Ah. Pardonnez-moi, Inspector Hudson. My enthusiasm sweeps me away. Je m'excuse. Oh, sweep away, Mr. Dupin. Sweep away. Merci, monsieur. The window. We examine the window, yes? It won't open. Ah, you see? A nail has been hammered through the frame into the sill. That's right. You'll find that window is unopenable as the other. Observe, Corporal Larson. With the aid of a small knife, I withdraw the nail. Please <coughs> observe. The window will still not open. So, a hidden spring must exist. Aha. Uh -huh. Hidden spring. This window closing would engage the spring, but the nail could not have been replaced. Therefore, our perpetrators must have escaped through the other window, oui? I have a headache. I search for the spring. Now, for the nail. 
Seems a stout fitted in the same manner. If you will observe, gentlemen, I draw it out. Oops. The head of the nail with a quarter inch of shank. What the devil? Our killers must have escaped through this window, which, when swung shut, became fastened to the spring. The retention of the spring was mistaken for that of the nail, rendering any further police inquiry unnecessary. Yes, Corporal Larson? I, uh... It, it never... Uh, I... He's got you, Larson. And if I'd been in your place, he'd have had me too. You amaze me, Dupin. <laughs> Mr. Dupin, that's as brilliant a piece of deduction as I ever hoped to see. J'accepte le compliment. Merci. And now let us bring our ingress-egress theory to its conclusion. And a little fresh air to this stale and deadly little room. <laughs> out the fate of the Les Panais, like a cat with a ball of twine, tapping it this way and that, unraveling it until there was nothing left to look at but the truth. Listening to him, it was impossible not to feel the murders on Morgue Street slipping from the grasp of our dull, everyday police procedures and falling under the influence of Dupin's deductive genius. It was thrilling to have him reveal what had been hidden, even if it was a dull lump of pain in one's pride to know it also had been hidden from us. Comme vous pouvez voir, messieurs, five feet from the window runs a lightning rod up the length of the building. From this... It is possible to reach the window shutters if they are swung out. That renders them within two feet of the rod. The murderer leaps, grasps the shutter, and swings right into the room. A man would have to be an acrobat to do that. Incredibly strong. There are indications everywhere of a vigor most marvelous. We... Oui? On the one hand, we have astounding agility, superhuman strength, and butchery without motive. On the other hand, a high-pitched voice thought to have spoken in many languages. This is a tuft of hair from the fireplace. Monsieur Carver, what do you make of it? Well, it's... Uh, my God... Let me see that. What is it? Dupin, you're not a detective, you're a bloody witch doctor. This hair isn't human. Exactement. And the spread of the indentation marks of the fingers on the throat of Mademoiselle Lespinay come from no human hand. What is he saying? What are you saying? Inspector, if I could spare you the stress of this revelation, I would. A passage from Cuvier's L'Histoire Naturelle des Animaux seems a propos. It is a minute anatomical account of the large fulvous orangutan of the East Indian Islands. Are you having me on, lad? A monkey? Surely not, sir. You want me to go out and arrest a bloody monkey? The monkey murders. Good Lord, sir. Can you see the papers? Francis-y, monsieur. Think. Prodigious strength. Wild ferocity. Astounding agility. All put to the service of an utterly motiveless crime. My impossible scenario, gentlemen, is not only possible, but probable. Oh! <laughs> 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 
was true. Even while we fumed and fussed and swore up and down that it wasn't, Japan had discovered more than just the truth. He had opened a hole in the world, in Toronto, in its daily comings and goings, a, a hole through which we saw another dimension of reality altogether. But solving the murders on Mark Street brought no sense of relief. It only heightened my sense of anxiety. I felt as if somewhere in the vast sprawl of Toronto, some horrible fate was rising up, searching for me. Seeking me out, wanting to know the very who, and what, and where of me, of us, of all of us. Dr. John Carver is recounting the story. He's a recent medical graduate assigned to the coroner's office, and still finding his way inside a criminal investigation. When was it? Just before the New Year's, eighty-nine into ninety, eighteen ninety. I had come straight out of medical school into the Toronto coroner's office. Carver, the coroner, was the standard jibe. Yes, just before New Year's, I remember fragments, bits of memory. Pictures merge, the way snowflakes link to make a carpet on the ground. Pensez-y, monsieur. Think. My scenario is the only possible one. That's Inspector Dupin, a flashing little dandy from French Canada, Quebec star policeman. It cannot be a credible explanation of the evidence, sir. We'd be laughed off the force. That's Inspector Hudson. A long, lean man, hard as wire. Toronto's top cop. Nine days till retirement, and I get a Quebec copper who wants me to arrest a monkey. Corporal Larson, a large doorknob of a man. I wanted to like him, but never managed it. Mr. Dupin, that's as annoyingly brilliant a piece of police work as I ever hoped to see. There I am. That's me. I can smell the room. The death in the room. It's rich with the thick scent of double murder. Ah,、uh, excuse me. That's Michael Carmichael with the camera. We went to school together. The idea of photography as a forensic tool was a new one. He was recording the crime scene, keeping it fresh for posterity, as he liked to say. You've got to be kidding me! A monkey? Surely not, sir. You want me to go out and arrest a, a monkey? We'll be the laughing stock of Toronto. Pensez-y, Monsieur. Think. Prodigious strength, wild ferocity, astounding agility—all put to the service of an utterly motiveless crime. My impossible scenario, gentlemen, is not only possible but probable. Inspector Dupin, you cannot. I cannot. I, sir, you stupefy me. The correct interpretation of these lieux du crime is the one I am giving you. No,、oh, let's get some air. I need some fresh air. Michael, John, what do you think of all this? I think your inspectors Dupin and Hudson are a couple of loony bookends to a double murder, and they deserve each other. And if I were you, my lad, I'd pack your bodies off to the morgue and yourself off to bed. Their kind of headbanging's not worth losing sleep over. That, if you ask me, which you did, is what I think. Oh, love to the wife and kids. <laughs> right. Oh, John. Yes. Say cheese. Permettez-moi, 
Thank you. Now look here, Dupin. Let me get this straight. The Lespinay's mother and daughter are brutally slain. Screams are heard, and in the calm that follows, voices. A low voice and a high voice. Ye. Correct. Right. The low voice was that of an Englishman from England. The high voice, we don't know. The daughter's strangled and stuffed up the chimney. The mother's throat slashed and she's thrown out the window. I know, I know. The hair found by the fireplace wasn't human. And the spread of the finger marks on the daughter's throat came from no human hand. That does not make the perpetrator some kind of bloody barbary ape. An anthropoid ape, simia satyrus, of arboreal habits. We? Oui? Yeah, we. Oui. I remembered fishing in the spring floods of the Humber when I was a boy. I stumbled and was engulfed by the roiling waters. The exposed root of a tree broke a rib and saved my life. Now, as we emerged from the crime scene, I felt the same sensation, as if I were rushing towards something terrible that knew me and was in the process of widening its maw to receive me, to receive us. Hear that? I can't see it. What? It's that damn organ grinder's monkey. The police van ran the grinder down. What's his monkey doing here? I am not going to accept some Barbary ape as a murderer. What about a human being? What about the Englishman with the low voice? Uh, bravo, Mr. Carver. This mysterious Englishman is our next point of contact. I take him to be a sailor. And not of the Great Lakes variety. How could you possibly know that, Dupin? What kind of Englishman finds himself in the way of possessing an orangutan. One with mobility enough to take advantage of international travel. And the orangutan population is found several thousand miles slightly southeast of the Great Lakes. We oui? Give or take a compass point or two. All right, Inspector Dupin, what do you want us to do? Send this note to every newspaper in Toronto in time for the midday edition. Caught in the vicinity of Bloor and Bather Streets in Toronto? The distance between there and Mog Street being substantial allows no hint of our connecting the beast to the murders. You're a canny wee lad, aren't you? Merely a steward of the gifts God gave me. Yeah. Caught in the early hours of this morning, a very large, tawny orangutan of the Bornee species. The owner may reclaim his animal upon satisfactory identification and paying a few charges arising from its capture and keeping. The address is a warehouse by the lake on Front Street. The time is to be midnight. Tomorrow? Today. Tonight. Tuesday. Wednesday. Ah, uh, oui. Mercredi. Eyelids of morning, gentlemen. Another day revealing the world after yet another night. Till midnight, then. Uh, please uh, to be armed, we. Oui? Bonne nuit and uh, sleep well, mes amis. It's raining. Well, Inspector Hudson. Well, what, Corporal Larson? You don't believe any of this, do you? Well, that wee French fry has put a ring through my nose and got me curious, but he'd better lead me straight to the trough of enlightenment, or I'll have the bugger for midnight brunch. Get your bodies to the morgue and yourself to bed, Mr. Carver. Good work, lad. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Corporal Larson, you'll accompany me to the station? Yes, sir. Coroners don't dream. But that afternoon, the 
mutilated Les Bernays took high tea in an abandoned abattoir. Dupin swung an organ grinder's monkey by the tail. And Inspector Hudson said things I couldn't make out as he ate black innards from a lunch bucket. While Corporal Larson wept quietly in a corner. Then the dream unfurled Toronto in a bird's eye view as something slouched and grunting made its way towards me. As the evening approached midnight, I made my way towards our Front Street rendezvous. Climbing up onto the walkway around the side of the building, I could see Hudson and Larson gazing out over Lake Ontario. sleep at all. The whole city's abuzz with the murders on Morgue Street. Sounds like a cheap novel. Well, I managed an hour or two, but all it did was make me feel my age. Inspector Hudson? Corporal? I was thinking, Carver, follow-up is not exactly in the coroner's job description, is it? I want to know if Dupin is right. I admit, last night he had me. <laughs> He's had us all, son. We're here, aren't we? It's an interesting mind, eh? Fast. Unafraid, even if he is a bar in the butt. Are you armed, gentlemen? <laughs> Eight days to retirement? Yes, sir. I, I, I didn't think to. Uh... Ah, you'll be fine, son. The sooner we get this Frenchman back to his Belle Province, the sooner we can put this old sorry business behind us. Speak of the devil, Inspector. Sir, in the moonlight on the lake. Bonsoir, Monsieur. Midnight fishing, Inspector Dupin? I have been watching the rendezvous point from the opposite dock. Our sailor has not arrived before us. Gavin, help him out of that skiff. Careful, it's a cold night for a bath. Is your hand, sir? Uh, I have secured every entrance to the building but one. Merci, je vous suis reconnaissant, Monsieur Carver. Down this way, gentlemen. Our Englishmen will not be able to make a surprise at you. Been a busy little bee, hasn't he? Uh, here we go. I should have brought a gun. Merde! Do you pay? Dupin. Ah, the door uh, seems somewhat stubborn. Stand aside, will you? There are some things in which my expertise is well known. Deja vu. I've been there before. In my dreams. Stepping into that warehouse was like stepping off into an abyss. One thought pounded, burrowed into my head. I'd been here before, and I should definitely not be here again. I left Lance earlier. Ah, ah. Hey. Well, huh? hey. One for you. Thanks, sir. That's right. It's huge. The ceiling's so high, I can't even see it. It stinks in here. Well, it used to be one of the city's larger abattoirs. It couldn't be. That inspector would be a monkey of a different color. You work in Grandeur Monkey? It's following us. It's a capuchin. So cold for the caps of... Crown hair that resembled the cowls of the Capuchin monks. Quite harmless. This way, there is a smaller antechamber. Uh, Mr. Carver, if you would be kind enough to leave a little lamp for our English sailor. Yes, sir. Merci. My, uh, the lamp's gone out. Yeah, light it off, man. This way, gentlemen. What are we going to do, Inspector? Do? We're going to follow the gentleman. Come on. I should have 
brought a gun. That's midnight. Your sailor's late, Dupin. What if he doesn't show? Your theory will be soup, Dupin. Well, you don't seriously think he's going to waltz into an abattoir after midnight and ask for his killer monkey back, do you? It's an ape, not a monkey. That's a monkey. You don't suppose they've met, do you? What do you mean? Nothing. Bad joke. Our Englishman will show up. I am innocent and I am poor, he says to himself. My animal is of great value. It was discovered some distance from the murders, so it is not suspected. Besides, if I avoid claiming the creature, it may fall into the hands of the police. Thereby stimulating a suspicion they do not at the present time possess. Exactement, Inspector. Vous avez deviné. So he answers the advertisement, avoids the police, recovers the orangutan and keeps it under wraps until things blow over. Under wraps? How do you keep a 300-pound killer monkey under wraps? Sidearms at the ready, s'il vous plaît. If you'll douse your lamps and step back into the shadows, gentlemen. I should have brought a gun. Come in, please. And don't be afraid. Leave the door open if you wish. Please, won't you sit? You've called for your orangutan. Oh, it is a remarkably fine specimen. And no doubt quite valuable, yes? How old is it? Uh, four or five years. Have you got him here? At the livery stable nearby. You are prepared to identify the property? I am. I shall be so sorry to part with him. I'm willing to pay a reward. Uh, within reason, of course. Ah, très bien, oui. Uh, let me see. Reward within reason? Yes. Why don't you keep your money and just tell me everything you know about the murders on Larry Morgue, oui? No! Please, hold your ground, man. Get your, your arms away from your body, sir. The scent of the atrocities on Larry Morgue. Sit back down, sir. All right. My name's Grant, Alex Grant. It was god awful. There was nothing I could do. Those two ladies. It was... I'll tell you everything. Please. We simply want to know what happened. Carver, light the lamp slide. Yes, sir. Corporal Larson, put up your side arm. Some time ago, uh, I made a voyage to the Indian archipelago. A mate and me, we, um, we went into the jungle. We trapped this ape, orangutan, and organised to smuggle it to the New World. Uh, zoos pay big. Anyhow, a long story short, this mate of mine... What are you talking about? Well, he died. Tragic like. Anyhow, as sole owner, I managed to get it to Toronto. There was this um, buyer from New York. Please, continue. Continue. I speak a bit of the French, if that will help. No, no, Grace, you will play. In English. Uh, rented a barn in the West End, had a, had a cage and a whip. Waiting for the buyer. Uh, came home one night, you know, been uh, drinking, drunk, 
might have been a bit quicker on my feet otherwise. Anyway, the beast was sitting on the toilet with me razor in its hand and shaving soap on its face. Well, it, it would have seen me shave. They do that. Copy cat things. I went for the whip, but it saw me coming and took off through the window. He'd gotten away from me before, but I'd always managed to get him back. <laughs> Ran me a right merry chase, he did. And I, I had him cornered, too, on Morgue Street. When it swung up this lightning rod of a building, leapt onto an open shutter, and neat as you please, swung itself right into the room. Well, the whole thing didn't take but a minute. Being a sailor, I'm used to heights, so I went up after it. Uh, I couldn't get to the window, but I could see in. And it was horrible. The ape got a hold of the old lady and was flourishing the razor about her head, imitating shaving her. With one sweep of its arm, it nearly cut her head clean off. Ah, oh. uh, the, the, the daughter keeled over in a swoon. But with the blood and all, the beast went into a frenzy and leapt on her, grabbed her by the throat and flung her about like she was a doll. Suddenly, the beast saw me through the window. No doubt remembering the whip and knowing it had done wrong, it tried to conceal the girl by stuffing her up the chimney. Then it just stood there looking at me. With a stupid look comes over them sometimes. Oh, I tried to talk it out of the room, but it wasn't having any of that. Things were in a right bloody mess. So I, I tailed it home. Over my shoulder as I was running, I saw the old lady coming down the height of the building onto the cobblestones in the courtyard. Oh, I, I, I didn't mean no harm, Gov. God's me witness. I didn't mean no harm. It was all... an accident. God's truth. Voici donc votre explication, messieurs. There are your murders on la rue Morgue. The high and low voices heard by our witnesses were those of our friend here, commingled with the jabbering brute. The orangutan escaped through the window, accidentally closing the window as it passed through. Et voilà. L'énigme n'en est plus une, oui. The riddle unriddled. It had happened. It had all happened, just the way Dupin had said. He had been right at every twisted turn. He had followed the incredible story right down to its tiniest detail. He had broken out of the logic of everyday life and given us a glimpse of a world of accidental horror. But he had forgotten to factor into his logical world its most illogical element. And right up to this very moment, I don't know how many of us have lived to regret it. Alors, messieurs, je vous quitte. A remarkable case. If your other cases are as singular as this... Then this old corporal would never have made it to retirement. Your powers of deductive reasoning, sir. Beyond the pale. I admit it. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Merci, Inspector. Uh, to tell true, Inspector Hudson, such powers are as much burden as gift. My life's like a ship receding from the shore, admiring life's everyday moments as I drift further and further away from them. The policeman's lot, sir. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, gentlemen, there's something not right here. Garber? Noises in the dark, sir. I don't think we're the only ones in this warehouse. <sighs> It's that damned organ grinder's monkey. Been following me ever since we ran the poor beggar down last night. No, did you? 
It's the orangutan. Please, nobody move. That would never have occurred to me. Inspector, they've both been following us. Oh, Dieu de Dieu, je suis un imbécile. Every mother's child is born to die. But what the hell a monkey has got to do with it? Look out! Get back! dead. I wasn't killed. For all of our collective brilliance, the monkeys have carried the day. The last thing I remember was when the monster was flinging Inspector Dupin away into the darkness. There, clinging to its neck, as if urging it on, was the organ grinder's monkey. I wondered like Dupin if the beasts could have possibly been in collusion. But by then the orangutan was reaching for me and I stopped thinking and closed my eyes. (laughs) Oddly, it seems... just heard the conclusion of Rue Morgue Redux by Neil Monroe, adapted from the Edgar Allan Poe story, The Murders in the Rue Morgue. Heard in the cast today, Jesse Collins as Dr. John Carver, Guy Bannerman as Inspector Hudson, Dennis O'Connor as Inspector Dupin, George Booza as Corporal Larson, Greg Spottiswood as Michael Carmichael, and Ian Deacon as The Sailor. The music was composed and conducted by Milan Kimlicka. The recording engineers were Wayne Richards and Greg DeClute. Sound effects were by Matt Wilcott. Rosie Fernandez was the associate producer. The program was produced and directed in Toronto by Bill Howell, the executive producer of The Mystery Project. Our coordinating producer is Barry Morgan. I'm Bob Boving, thanking you for listening and inviting your comments. See you next week. Mm-hmm.